What's going on everybody? Week 1 of the NFL season is finally in the books and my favorite team, the Detroit Lions, took home their first win of the season. And they did not fail to take me on a roller coaster ride throughout the whole game, especially after the terrible first half we played. But we got the win over an Arizona Cardinals team that is pretty talented, so that's good enough for me. But as I said, they did not fail to take us on a roller coaster ride throughout the game. So here are the positives from the game, and here are the pfft from the game. So since the negative things happened right off the bat in the game, I'll start with the negatives. So obviously the first play of the offense and Matthew Stafford's first pass of the season was returned for a pick six by Jonathan Bethel. Yeah, yeah, not a great way to start the season as the highest paid player in the NFL. But this will kind of loop into a positive later on in the video, so stay tuned. So yeah, that's not a great way for the offensive side of the ball to start the season. Along with that, the rushing attack was held under 100 yards again, as it seems like it always does, and only rushed for 82 yards this game. The new and improved offensive line in the run game didn't look very improved as there were multiple defenders in the backfield before Theo Riddick, Amir Abdullah, or Dwayne Washington got the ball plenty of time, so there wasn't really much they could have done anyway. And figuring that Matthew Stafford himself had 14 yards rushing, take that away and it was even more of a terrible night for the Lions rushing attack. There also was a couple drops by Kenny Galladay, but as you'll see if you keep watching the video, he did more than make up for that. But by far what I thought was the worst takeaway from this game was special teams. Matt Perry did his job kicking a 58 yard field goal right through the uprights and landing it right at a cameraman's marbles. That's gotta hurt. But give the camera guy props, he didn't even flinch afterwards. While I was watching the game, I saw the football go like directly at the camera. But then after watching it from like the far side and watching it hit him, he didn't even move the camera and he didn't even flinch. So give that cameraman some props. He should get a raise or something for that. But along with handling the field goal and kickoff duties, Matt Perry then had to turn into a punter after new punter Casey Redfern, who's filling in for Sam Martin, fumbled the snap in the end zone, then almost had a Dan Olasky moment and almost ran out the back of the end zone, then tried to take it himself and run it instead of trying to just kick it while he was running, and then got tackled and tore his ACL. Along with that, Jake Rudock fumbled an extra point snap, so we ended up with six points after a touchdown instead of seven. If you thought that was it for the special team miscues, think again. Because kick returner Dwayne Washington made an absolute fool of himself multiple times returning kicks. There were a couple returns where he returned it and didn't even get to the 20, forcing the offense to start below the 20 and go 90 yards just to score. And then, this one made me laugh, the ball fumbled into the end zone, he picked it up, and instead of taking a knee, picked it up and then tried running out the end zone with it and finished below the 10 yard line. There is absolutely no excuse for stuff like that, that's just idiotic. Punting and handling snaps is an issue, but what's the most important issue when it comes to special teams is the line starting field position. The staff must get into the meeting room and maybe change kick returners or maybe have a talk with Dwayne just to take a knee anytime it's in the end zone so the Lions don't have to go 90 yards if they want to score a touchdown every game. And I believe that is it with the miscues on special teams. Oh wait, nope, nope, that's not it. During a field goal attempt by the Arizona Cardinals on 4th and 10, we tried to jump over the line, resulting in a penalty and giving them a fresh set of downs. So yeah, special teams is a concern if this team wants to get better than last year. Okay, now let's move into the positives of this week's win over the Cardinals. As I mentioned earlier, Matthew Stafford's pick 6 kind of looped into a positive, at least for me, and this is why. After being made the highest paid player in the NFL, throwing a pick 6 on your first play of the season definitely warranted some critics to come out and criticize him and get all over him and we're not even a two series into the game. It also warranted Stephen A to come out and tweet about the pick six and come at Stafford and I'm assuming that that's the only play Stephen A saw from that whole game because I highly doubt Stephen A even watches half these football games that go on. Anyways, I'm sure you can imagine the pressure that's on Stafford's shoulders now walking back out on offense after throwing a pick six on his first play after signing that mega contract. And that's what's so great about it. He didn't let the pick six get to his head. He stayed completely poised and had a complete, utterly excellent outing the rest of the game. He also put another fourth quarter comeback on his resume this season in the first game of the year after having eight last season. If you're a Lions fan, you should be extremely excited for what you saw from Matthew Stafford, even though he's shown us this throughout his whole nine-year career with the Lions. And for those critics who don't believe that he should have got this contract and that maybe the Lions should have moved on after this season, I'm sure he shut you guys up for at least one more week. 
with almost 300 yards throwing and four touchdown passes thrown after the pick six, Stafford continues to prove why he's one of the elite quarterbacks in the game. And of those four touchdowns, two of them went to rookie Kenny Galladay, who I criticized earlier in the video for dropping a couple passes earlier on in the game. But like I said, boy did he make up for it. I mean, these catches were spectacular. Galladay looks the part as the deep threat and red zone threat the Lions have desperately needed since Megatron decided to hang up the cleats. With Galladay and Marvin Jones taking up the deep threats for Stafford and the Lions, and then having Golden Tate work to underneath like he did last game for 10 receptions and over 100 yards, I mean that was crazy. If the Lions could ever get this rushing attack just to get over 100 yards a game, or even just 90 or just any kind of production, this Lions offense could be elite easily, and they might even get there just with this passing attack. I mean, Stafford has so many weapons all over the field. And speaking of Marvin Jones, he juked Patrick Pearson out of his shoes for his touchdown catch in the red zone. I mean, that was really good. So the Lions offense looked great after the first half, and that was a plus. But the defense looked great all game. The defense forced four turnovers, three interceptions, and one fumble on David Johnson, and had a pick six from Miles Killerbrew. And speaking of Killerbrew, I've always liked him since the Lions drafted him last year, and he always pops out on the screen on key tackles on third down or making a pass breakup. I really like him and think he's going to be a special player for the Lions moving forward. And while the Lions defense only had one sack this game, they were constantly all over Carson Palmer, collapsing the pocket, especially from Ziggy Ansah, who almost had a few sacks himself, but forced him to throw it away or throw a bad pass that was intercepted. It was really good to see Ziggy play well and get these quarterback hurries on him after having an injury plagued last season. I think he's back to full form and he's going to be just fine for us this year. Everyone in the secondary looked great besides Nevin Lawson who started to get picked on in the second and third quarter. But besides that, we looked really good in the secondary. Darius Slay almost added another pick that would have made it five turnovers, but Gerard Davis came out and knocked the ball out of his hands as he was bringing it down. But all in all, the defense looked spectacular. And before I end this video, I just want to say there were two players on defense that really jumped out at me. One of them I've already talked about in Miles Killebrew, who always seems to come up with some key tackles on third down, a pass deflection, and had a pick six this game. I think he's going to be a special player, like I said, for the Lions moving forward in the box and in the secondary. And the second player is also a second year player in Ashawn Robinson. And if you just watch the game, he was just making hustle plays all throughout the game running down the field, not giving up on the play, making tackles from behind, and he also forced a fumble on David Johnson, which was also a hustle play from behind, just getting the hand on the ball and punching it loose. Ashawn Robinson is a really good player. He made a name for himself last year for batting balls down the line of scrimmage. He looks like he's going to be a real impactful player for the Lions this year. And that's all I have for you guys today. What did you guys take away from the Lions' victory? What were some of the good things you guys took away? What were some of the bad things you guys took away? What do you guys think about the Lions moving forward? What do you guys think about the Lions moving into this Monday night game against the New York Giants? Let me know all of these kind of things in the comment section below. Or you guys can hit me up on Twitter, as always, at Kuka Hill, which I'll put up here for you guys once again. If you liked the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. If you like the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me. Go ahead and show your friends, show your family, share it on social media. Get my channel out there and show everybody who's interested in some sports talk about football and basketball. It would really be appreciated, guys. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed week one of the NFL season and are looking forward to week two. And real quick, I just want to give a shout out to my boy Deontay who got his first college start this past weekend for Northern Michigan University. And until my next video, go ahead and get my channel out there, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys later.